Hello everyone, how are you? So delighted to see you out on the field again today. Got the wind mic, so no nasty sounds from Mr. Wind. Um, out on a different field today, I've gone for the stubble because it's something I want to talk to you about. I want to discuss deep ploughing. Now, this has arisen because Gavin and I have been noticing that these fields that we're on that have the plough that's gone down at four foot or so, um, massively, massively huge deep ploughing, there are no signals. And my first thought was, hmm, it's actually put everything really, really deep and it's turned it upside down and that's why we can't get it and it'll come up the next time. But I was on that field in my last video, which used to have the grass on it that was pasture, that was rock hard. There are chunks of grass uh, left in the plow that you can see, the, where they've plowed it, you can see the, the tufts, tufts of grass. So I know that there are signals and finds that aren't that deep on that field, and yet it's still very quiet. The finds I'm finding are on the edges. Now this got me to thinking, especially after seeing another video by a chap named the Grim Bleeper, who you really need to check out, and uh, he's a fabulous guy, and uh, he's done another video on mental health and metal detecting, which we definitely need to talk about. But this video is about deep ploughing, and he's mentioned that he's got the Knox 800, and he was thinking that the Knox 800 was rubbish on deep ploughing, but uh, I don't think it actually is the Knox, and that's, you know, this is me, I'm the Simplex guru, I love my Simplex, but I think I will have to give credit where it's due. I don't think the problem is the Knox. I think the problem is the deep ploughing. I think it has left so many gaps in the soil, it has left so much uh, airspace that the detector isn't actually really able to make a good continuous signal down to the fines. And I did say in that video that I did where I showed you the deep ploughing that the, it was like butter and I could just, just you know, with my, my digging knife, just knock it away. I think it's causing problems with the fines and the signals, um, sorry, the fines and the si signal sending. And even though I have, um, you know, it's rained, it's compacted it a bit more, um, I've got the thing on the simplex on full sensitivity and field to go as deep as it can. Um, I think it's struggling. I think it's struggling because it's just too aerated in there. And um, uh, so tell me what you think. Tell me what your experience is. Um, I think this may be why folks in England really love their fields that have been rolled. Uh oh, so it's nicer to walk on, but it recompacts the soil, doesn't it? So then you don't have a problem with your signals because everything's smushed back together and the signal can get through. Uh, anyway, that's my theory. Tell me what you think. This is probably well known to many metal metal detectors and I just haven't come across it yet. Um, but I've come back onto the stubble today because I actually want to find something. Uh, so I shall bring you back when I get to my first signal. I hope you are all having a safe and healthy and well festive season. And, uh, and I hope you can get out onto fields of your own. But let's go find a signal and, uh, and I'll let you know what it sounds like when we get there. Folks, I've got a really interesting signal here. So I'll let you hear it. I'll show you that the Simplex is set up on it is on field and it is on full sensitivity. It is chattering a bit because it is just sitting flat on the ground. But here is the signal. Let me find it again. Nice solid signal. So uh, let's have a dig of that and see what it is. Okay, so Simplex says it's out of the hole. Just up here. It's now reading in the 40s. So uh, let's have a look and see what this might be. Let me get my glove back on. I think somebody did ask me a question a while back about wearing gloves. And yes, I am unlike Chig. I do always wear my gloves. So let's have a look. You may not see them sometimes in the video because I'm going back and forth with turning the camera on and off. But if I am digging in the soil or messing with my finds, uh, I will have my gloves on until I know that it is completely safe. Just so that you know that. Ah, let's see. What is that? Is that our find? I think that may be what our find is. Let's get the simplex over here. We'll have to unmute her to find out. So here we are. That is absolutely it. I have no idea what it is. Uh, a bolt or a piece of copper or something? 
don't know. I will clean it up and I will put it in the pictures at the end. Let's go find something else. Right, yo folks, I've brought you back for this signal, even though I'm pretty sure it's aluminium, but uh, it would be something I would dig to check out, so let's check it out together. Okay, there's a grunt, there is a lot of slag, there's a lot of slag in this part of the field, and I'm getting a lot of grunty, jumpy signals that I'm, I know from experience are slag or charcoal. This one is just a bit too strong though. Now, she is likely going to be aluminium, but let's have a dig and check it out. So we'll wiggle method back off of it. And it's right there in front of the coil. Just there. Let's get it a dig up and let's have a look. I am trying to perfect this, uh, um, what do you call it, selfie stick. Oh, I think I see it possibly there, just there. I'm trying to perfect this selfie stick and digging and filming and talking and all that nonsense in, in, uh, at one, the same time. Uh, so please bear with me, but uh, I will get better. I have already got the, uh, the wind mic, so that shouldn't be harming your ears quite so much as it was before. So... Let's uh, pop the simplex up here, and I think I saw, I think, oh, maybe that's a root. That's a root. I thought it was a nail or something, but it is a root. So we need to find out if we've got this out the hole. So let's get our girl, and let's give it a go, and let's see. It's not there. Okay. Whatever it is, is now up here, and she is certain it is a 44. Whatever it is, it's a 44, and it is just in here. Do you see it? As I don't. I see a tiny bit of metal. I No, that's a rock. Is it a coin ball? Let's have a look. She's quite chatty at the moment, because she is running very, very hot. Because I want her to look deep in this field and get over the stubble. So, uh, excuse me for the fact that she is a bit chatty today. Uh, actually, well, I would mute her, but I need her, so that's not it. But I think I'm going to have to mute her. Let's check it out and see. Right, it should be right there in front of the coil. Uh, let's try that again then, together, and let's see if we see anything. Is it that? I believe it's that. Maybe not. Maybe that's a rock. I don't know. It looks like a strange rock. Let's, uh, let's check it with her. Ah, and then that is exactly what it is. It is that. Which might possibly be a bag seal. Or might just be a blob oh, of lead that I have flicked with my thumb away. So I will clean it up and I will put it in the pictures at the end. So I thought it would be aluminium. It may still be melted aluminium, but it might also just be some lead or it could be a bag seal. Hmm, will be interesting to find out. It seemed like a good idea for uh, me to show you what this field sounded like until I unclipped my belt, my digging knife fell off, I dropped my glove and it all just went terribly wrong. But we're all hooked back up again now. So I've got the, the, um, the phone ready and it's in its little selfie stick. So we're gonna have a walk along and let you listen to what this field sounds like. Hear that? That's one of those pieces of slag. You hear that squeak and it makes you stop, but it's not. It's not something you want. See what I mean about how busy this field is? That's not, that's not the stubble making the machine false. That's the metal working slag from the Bronze Age and the Iron Age here. And it's trying to pick signals out amongst all of that. It's 
so it's not always easy detecting. Thankfully, the SP24 means that the, uh, the stubble isn't causing the machine to false, even though it is on field and full sensitivity, which if I had the stock coil on this, it would be falsing on 2.77. So again, that signal there, I believe that's slag, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move things around with my boot a little and see if it cleans up again. Nah, that's just still too full of iron grunts for my liking. If you're new, you want to dig it because you want to make sure that you can go home at night and not regret missing digging a hole. but I will sleep quite soundly not having dug these holes that you're hearing, knowing that if I did, it would be a nasty little black rock I'd be digging up and not any kind of great treasure. Yeah, that's a maybe. I'll have to think about that one. So what I'm doing is I'm down on the back side of a slope. You can see here with the theory that everything runs downhill. There was a Pictish fort up there. Um, so I'm hoping that around here there might be something interesting, but we are getting a lot of their metalworking fallout. So And you can hear every one of those bleeps just sort of makes you jump and think, oh, is that it? Is that one? Is that one? But nah, it's not. There's a nice piece of pottery just there. It's a bit more solid, but it's broken and it's coming up 95, 96, which probably means that it's a nail. Now, that is a bit jumpy and is possibly some sort of metal working something, but it's also sitting nicely on that 70. So I'm going to now walk back and get my spade that I had to put down because I can't do both. Detect and carry a spade and film. So it's right there in front of the coil. Nice market. And uh, I'm going to go and get the spade, which I left way back up there. And then we'll come back here and we'll dig that and we'll see what it is. Okay, so the pinpointer says it's in the hole. I do have my glove off, but I am not touching anything other than my uh, digging knife. So I should be all right. If I'm going to touch anything in the hole, I will get my glove back on, which I will have to do once I find the find anyway. So let's have a look. The simplex wasn't reading it so well once I took the top of the plug off. Well, it was very, very deep. It was very, very solid. And then it went really quiet. So I got the pinpointer out and it found it uh, at the bottom of the hole, but the simplex wasn't wanting to pick it up there. So I'm not sure what it is. I'll get the pinpointer back on it and let's have a look. The simplex uh, was lying. I think I must have turned it on its side. I don't know if you can see it right there, just there, peeking its little head out, but uh, it was a coin. I think it's a coin. It's either a coin or a um, button, but it's just in here. See, just there. So uh, when I got the digging knife out, I flicked it out with the, uh, the digging knife and it landed over here, but it must have been when I got the, the clod out or I, I, I disturbed the clod, it must have turned it on its side and the simplex couldn't actually uh, see it anymore uh, the way that it was in the, in the soil. So there we go. Looks like it is toasted and there's not going to be much on there to see. As far as I can tell, it's looking pretty rough, but we'll have a clean up once we get home and we'll uh, see. So I'm trying to keep that in focus for you. We'll have a see if we can get anything off of that, but you heard the signal. That's the find. It was very, very sure that it was in there, but it was also quite bouncy. Now, it could be that there's some slag in this hole next to it that it was hearing, um, though certainly once I took the top of the clod off and uh, before I actually dislodged this, it was still quite bouncy. So 
Um, I'm thinking that it's not slag. I'm thinking that it was just how it was laying. Um, so, but you could hear that it was a very, very strong signal. And that's what I would say. There was no iron and it was a very strong signal and it was bouncy, but it was bouncy within a range of 10. So we give it a go. And for that, we get a coin. See you in the next one. Okay. So just so you know, I have switched down to park one and full sensitivity, just because I'm going to try and see if that's giving me slightly less of the cokey sounds and I can swing a bit faster with that too. So I've got this. I'm not really sure about it, but when I narrowed the coil right down, I was getting a 70 in there. Now that I'm looking at it again, I think it's a bit of that rubbishy slag. But since I've got you out and I've shown this to you, let's give it a dig and let's find out what it is. I've dug a little hole. Let's see if uh, the simplex is telling us that it's out of it. Oh, sounds like she's telling us it's in that bit and she sounds like she's telling us it's iron. Now that it's out, might've been a nail that got me. Nail sounded much better than it was. Let's squash these quads down a little bit with our boot. Ooh. I think that might have been a nail tricking us a bit. I'll get the pin pointer on it and we'll have a look. It wasn't a nail, folks. It was just a big old yucky piece of iron. <sighs> Catches out the best of us and I'm not one of the best of us. Um, but it still caught me out as well. So that's all it is. It's a bit of a plow just down there. And uh, there doesn't appear to be anything else, but it was obviously just sitting somewhere that it was sweet. And uh, hey ho, you win some, you lose some. Let's go find something else. Okay, so I just lost a big chunk of video for a lovely sounding signal. Thankfully, I had only just put the spade in when I realized that it wasn't recording. So I can come back with the simplex for you and let you have a listen. I have, I'm not sure if I've got it in the last take. So I am on park one and I am on full sensitivity, but have a listen to this. That is sounding like something we want to dig. So back onto mute, back with the spade that we did have ready to go when I realized it wasn't recording. And let's pop this clod. This is a uh, stubble that has been cut, but not yet plowed. So we don't have to be that picky with our hole margins. We can just sort of flip it up and flip it out and see if anything starts uh, shining at us that we can see or looking green at us. I don't see anything yet. So let's uh, So she thinks it's in there, so it does look like I've got it out the hole. Let's have a kneel down, keep the simplex where we can get to her. Oh dear, I've got her too close, she's upset. Oh, there we go. It's a bit of copper wire, sorry about that. I didn't hold that up right now, dropped it. Where did I put it? There it is. That's what it is, it's a bit of copper wire. Hear that sound? That's the sound of copper. And there it is. And that's why it had a little bit of a jump to it because it was a weirdly shaped item. Anyway, copper wire. Not a bad thing. Could have been a copper coin. She is quite chatty because I've got her pointed at my spade. Look at that. We point her away from the spade. Chatter drops right down. But let's go see what else we can find. So I thought I'd put you on my belt on the selfie stick and try and have a walk and see. I tried this before, but that's when I realized it wasn't recording. Gavin has said that this bit just up here is very, very hard packed little pebbles and it's impossible to dig. So he moved up the hill. Uh, we'll have a look as we get up here. Yeah. There is so much slag in here and so much iron working, it's really difficult to pick out sweet signals. And guess who came out with her headphones on one bar? Me, I forgot them last time. And then I came out this time 
and they're on one bar. And I daren't leave them on because you will find that if you have the Simplex WHP, if your headphones lose charge and turn themselves off, they unpair. And then you have to go look up the procedure to pair them again uh, because nobody remembers it because you don't do it very often. So what I've done is I have just left them off and I have gone back to audio only on the machine because it's fully charged. But it does mean that my ability to differentiate signals isn't quite as good as it would be. That is coming up in the 94 range really deep, but yeah, it's getting dark and I'm trying to find signals that I know are going to be good signals uh, rather than chasing after could be's, even though that's probably where all the big confederate gold is buried haha <laughs> which we don't have uh we'll say it's bonnie prince charlie's gold um see that big giant hole that is not me nor gavin that is a badger or some sort of creature in there was digging for whatever sort of beasties to find i think i shall uh, kick the spoil back in so we don't get blamed for it though i'm sure that we wouldn't apologies for that leaning me leaning over sort of signal they'll run the detector over it they pull anything up deep out of the ground that's good no and it's actually very, very solid. I want to move it with my boot and I think it's partially frozen, so I'm leaving it there. I'm not going to fill it in because it's frozen and I'd have to undo you and get the spade out and dig it all up and everything. And I can't be bothered because I'm lazy. No, I'm not. I just want to detect with you and I want to find something. Let's find something good. Come on, Fields, you've given us two coins already. One you guys haven't seen because I was bad and didn't turn the camera on because I thought it was nothing. And then, oh, there's a hole from Gavin over there. I wonder what he's got. That right there is a well-filled in detectorous hole over there. I think you can see it. Um, so let's keep heading down. Recording at some point, I don't know when. This is the back side of that field I was on the other day and uh, it is uh, you can see the deep plowing there but they can't really deep plow because the ground is so hard uh, and then we go into a bog over here uh, and then this is the back of where a settlement was up on that bray and so this should be where all the stuff falls down from the back of the settlement pictish settlement so that's nice and historical um so i think rather than uh, trying to talk to the camera that keeps shutting itself off sorry about that tone Rather than trying to talk, keep talking to the camera that tries to shut itself off in a simplex that wants to chatter because I'm standing near her with the spade, um, I'm going to switch you off and then I'll bring you back if I find another good signal. You see the sun's going down too, so I better hurry. Okay, so this was had quite an iron grunt behind it when I started digging it, but it had a quite a bright tone as well. So I didn't record it, but I wanted to see what it was. Now that I've gotten all of the earth out of the way, I'm getting a much better signal. It's still saying it's deep, but it's giving me something a heck of a lot stronger. So uh, I wanted to get the pen pointer on it and have a look, but I wanted you to see that signal, uh, see what it looks like, uh, so that when we get this find out, we'll know what to match it with. So I was right and not right in getting you out for the find or not getting you out with the find, depending on your point of view. This is what it is. It is iron. The, the simplex was right initially. I believe it was iron. I'm looking at the base of that and thinking, yes, no, that's iron. Um, and it's obviously a nail which can jump up bright. Um, and that's why the signal came out the way it did. That's the bad reason I wouldn't want to get you out. But the good reason I would want to get you out is this is a really, really old nail. It is blacksmith made. And there was a settlement. Well, there was a fort on this site, which is Pictish, um, which is late Iron Age in this part of the world. So, you know, it is very possible that this, this nail went with that settlement because there's not anything else in this field or been in this field since. So it could be quite a significant find um, in relation to that settlement. Uh, I'll get it cleaned up and I'll put a picture in at the end. So maybe it's worth something. Maybe it's just an old nail that's fallen off of something or been spread on the field as they do. Who knows? I'll maybe put it to a friend that's an archaeologist, see what he thinks. But yeah, there we go. Let's go find something else. Right, so we have our next signal that the simplex is excited about. 
Now you see that I have, I have gone back onto field because I just wasn't happy with the way that the Park One was performing on this field. You'll find that you'll want to use all the assorted modes, try different things, see what you think works best. And uh, for me, I'm finding in this field, I don't normally like field, but in this field, I'm liking it. So we've got an interesting signal there. Uh, let's uh, figure out where she is. She sounded quite squealy like a little pig, so it might be aluminium, but then I thought it was aluminium before and it was lead. So let's find out. We'll show you folks that always be careful because here we are with the hole and I've gone over the hole. It's not there. It's not there. Where's it gone? I had set my spade over here, but as it was moving, it dropped those bits of dirt right there off. And look, that's where it is. It's fallen off the clod that was on the spade. So it's not in the hole where I was looking for it. It is out and it is in here somewhere. So let's see in all of this what we have. Because I don't really see anything obvious jumping up except maybe that piece of whatever that is. What is that? That is a little bit of a, a bar or something. I don't know. Okay, I'm just going to move the simplex because she's making a bit of a racket. Let's rub that on the trousers. Here we go. And do we have any more idea what that is? No, it looks like it might have a cross on it, but I don't think it's anything important. Um, don't know. I'll clean it up and I'll put it in at the end. Let's see what that is. Interesting. Eh, well, that was worth keeping on for. Let's go find something else. Well, folks, I really wish I could have shown you this last signal, but my phone decided it was going to turn itself off, which is a bit rubbish. So I couldn't show it to you. It was really, really strong. It was 70 odd. And it turns out that it's going to be this little tiny turner, which is a 17th century coin that has come out of that hole just there. So anyway, uh, sorry I couldn't actually show you that signal. Um, and I think that's going to be the last thing for me because I can see Gavin's back to the car. But if I find anything, I'll try and look at the camera and look at you actually, instead of looking way over there. Um, I will, if I find anything on the way back to the car, I'll pull you out and we'll have one last signal. If not, I will be saying goodbye, probably in the car. Folks, the sun's going down, so this is going to be our last signal of the day, but uh, here we go. There's a little grunt of iron there, but she's still nice and sharp enough for me to be interested in that. So I'll give it a dig up and we will see what it is and we'll talk about it if it's something good.